Okay. <clears throat> um, Esther is the Supreme. Why do we have to do these reports for STRS? It's for them to know what figures or earnings is for fiscal year 24. Um, so they can apply that for their retirement. They will do um, the non-advanced position reports, the criteria for that. And I have a thing up here. And the reports are here under S3S uh, S3 reporting in advance. And you would use your academic year, which is your July 1st of 2023 to 630 2024. And you can go ahead and run each of these reports. And as the district should be running those now or have been running them after each pay here in the last um, month, month or so um, to start balancing them out. So that way they're ready here by the end of July when they've uh, finished their last pay of uh, June, excuse me, that they have no errors. So my first one will be my non advance report. I can find it. Here it is. So here is my non advance report. And the employees that will be showing on this will be um, any employee with a position of a retirement code um, as SERS inactive. So I will just kind of go um, hop through here a little bit just so you can see um, where we find that. And that would be, oh, excuse me. I'm in the wrong place here. Let's try position. There we go. And you will see the STRS um, retirement code. And they also have to be active or non-active in order to be placed on the non-advanced positions report. Um, the employee must have a contract compensation, again, with a date range that falls within the current date. So the date that you're running the report um, or the fiscal year that needs to fall within that time frame. The compensation pays paid, again, um, for the non-advanced report must be less than the pays in contract. And again, there must be contract days work greater than zero. So again, on the compensation, you want to make sure that they have um, more work days to be paid. And then also um, the pays and contract must not equal zero. Or pays paid, excuse me. And then also the next thing is the compensation um, contract work days um, cannot equal the contract days work um, or the compensation contract work days cannot equal the contract days worked as of June 30th. And again, when they're running the reports, they're using the job calendars of the employees to figure those dates. Again, like I said earlier, they wanna make sure they start running these um, reports as soon as possible. And the um, employees that mostly are on the non-advanced position reports would be your superintendents, your principals and supplementals. Um, so these employees would be the ones that are working and they have days yet to work in the summer months as of like July and August. So usually your superintendent principals do. Now your teachers wouldn't, um, usually they're done the last day of school, maybe a day later, and then, but they will still be being paid. Those are your advance employees that work. Um, there'll be like four pays left into the summer, um, but their days are equal. So this is uh, this would be like an employee that is on the advanced report and um, will be advancing. So again, these employees, they can check to make sure that they're on the non-advanced report and um, they should be showing, or if they're not, then they'll have to make sure that they get look into those and 
figure out if they should be advancing. So again, what do these figures mean on each of these reports? So as for the non-advanced report, we have the days on contract and the days worked as 630. So again, the days on contract is coming from the employee's compensation work days. So that is where those days are coming from. The next line here is your days worked as of June 30th. So what the report will be doing is first, we'll be adding the contract days worked from the compensation first. And then it will go and find the most recent payroll the employee was paid in. And then it uses um, a payroll stop date of that last pay plus one. So the day after the payroll stop date, and then as a starting date to look up for the days um, from the calendar up to the end of June 30th to get those days. And again, it looks for any of your um, job calendars. Um, it will look at any work days, the holidays, and the calamity days. Okay. And again, like I said earlier, if the employee is on the non-advanced report, um, again, they can use um, a compensation adjustment for that employee to get them to advance. So down here, they can adjust those days worked, this column, this contract days work here to get them to advance. So those days are equal if they um, notice that they're on the non-advance, but they should be. They can do that for each employee. And they can also adjust any um, days. So if they adjust the earned amount earned, this is going to adjust the um, your accrued wages also. So again, they can utilize this um, contribute con com compensation journal to adjust any of their figures if they need. So again, um, if they need to, again, just a reminder um, to adjust anything, they can use compensation adjustments to adjust an employee. Or if it's um, a lot of employees that maybe got missed on a job calendar, the work days weren't correct, they can um, go to job calendar and they can update and add work days to the, um, to the job calendar that they're working in if it's multiple employees and they don't want to do... Um, each compensation adjustment separately. Um, then once they process that payroll, um, they can go ahead and remove those um, work days from the calendar after the fact. So again, um, just depends if they have multiple employees or if they just have one or two, but they have um, a couple options there. The next line is on the noun advance. This would be coming, the contract obligation line, this would be coming from your comp compensation of the employee, the contract obligation field. So again, that is coming from the contract obligation field. And then the um, contract accrued, excuse me, the compensation, the accrued wages, that is your amount due. So that should match your accrued wages. Um, okay, Andrew had a question. At some point, can we discuss what happens when someone moves from advanced to non-advanced because the position changed teacher to principal as an example? Okay. So I something. Okay. I will have to look into that, Andrew, but I will um, let you know on that. Okay. The other one is the other areas to consider um, why a compensation is not advancing is the compensation archived. Um, if you archive an employee, they will not show on the advanced position reports. So again, 
double check to make sure that their compensation maybe didn't get archived or got archived by accident. Or if you want to remove them completely, you can do that by um, doing the non um, market marking them as archived. The next one, does the compensation have a compensation stop date? Um, again, look at the compensation. If it has a stop date and make sure the stop date is correct. Again, if they're advancing, these would be like your teachers. You wanna make sure that you um, enter a date that's in August, um, like what their last, because usually they're gonna be paid four or five pays yet into the summer. So they wanna make sure that you add a stop date that's into August um, for their last pay and that will get them on the advance report. So moving on to the advance report. There we go. So here's an example of the advance report that I ran. And this will show your credit the contract amount due, advance employee amount, which is usually will all be zeros for um, every employee, the advance pickup amount, and the total advanced amount. And if they're rehired, retiree. So again, for this employee to show on the advance report, they need to have a position of the retirement code set to STRS. And again, the position status has to be job um active or inactive. The employee must have a contract compensation with the date range that falls within the current date. And again, for advance, you got to make sure that their contract work days equal the contract days worked. And then the compensation contract work days and the contract days worked must be greater than zero. The compensation pays paid must be less than the pays in contract because usually they will still have um, four days or four pays or five pays to um, work yet and, to, um, and get their accrual money for the summer. And then also, um, if you take their contract obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount docked, and this must be greater than zero. So they still have remaining money to be paid. So again, just a reminder, um, always check their compensation stop date and make sure that falls within the date range, um, academic date range, so, cause this would prevent them from advancing. So again, what do these figures mean on the advanced position report? So a little breakdown here, the credit is um, how the reports when they're ran is using the STRS um, calculation for the employees with 120 or more days will receive 100% credit. And then employees that are less than 120 days, they're using the STRS decision tree, which I have here. And this is kind of a breakdown of how they're figuring um, what percentage they are getting. For employees that are part-time, the um, when we're running the report, it's looking at their payroll item 450. Go to that. And then on their payroll item 450, it's going to be employees that are marked as part time, which is right here. So for example, I have an employee here on my advanced report. And let me see if I can find her. Actually, it's on the advance. 
on the fiscal one, but it's the same. Avery, um, I just wanted to kind of show you how they come up with this 22%, like since this person is not full-time or since this person is part-time. So if I go to Avery, And they're 450. She is marked as part time. So to get that percentage that you see here, um, I don't have it on the vans, but on the on um, this part is to figure out you take the 39 days and you divide by the 180 days, and that gets your point your 22 percent. So again, you take the days divide by the um, 180 and you get your percentage. Now um, they use two different options here. Um, they use your income and divide that by the 12,000. So they take which is less of the two. So this employee had um, earnings of 54.98 divided by 12,000 and that gets me my 49%. So between the two, the 39 divided by 180 gets me my 22%. I want to, it takes the 22 because it's lesser of the two. So that's just kind of how the system is figuring this percentage on these reports and how um, they're coming up with that. And again, we have the link here for you that you can um, go ahead and if you don't think it's right, um, you can do the calculation to see if um, the report is calculating correctly. Um, if it's not, you they can send, uh, your district can send you a ticket and or um, more likely they may have to call STIRS to see um, if they are considered part-time or, or not, if they have questions. The next thing is um, any employees that are re-employed retirees, again, they will always show 0% credit with contributions. And again, it's using the rehired, retire rehired um, employees. And again, what we're finding most of the time is when they are um, employees are retiring at the beginning of the fiscal year. They're not getting the correct date in there. So that is messing with their um, days and then also the um, having two lines. So like here, this Birch, Carmen Birch, um, he is a retiree. And you can tell this that he's been retired the full year because he only has one line. He will have his full um stirs days and you have 0%. Now, if the employee was a rehired, maybe started in January in the middle of the fiscal year, they want to make sure that they mark that employee correct with the correct retirement date. The retirement date is crucial in the, in the timing of them marking that um, rehire retiree flags is um, crucial to the report being correct. So here on the comp or on the SERS item, excuse me, in the 450, you want to make sure they have this marked correct and they also want to have the rehire date. So they want to make sure the rehire date is the date they're actually starting their retirement and when they came back, excuse me, when they came back to rehire. So usually they come back um, in the beginning of the fiscal year and all years should be um, rehired and they should only show one line on the report. Now, you, they might have employees, like I said, that come back in the middle of the um, calendar year. So that means in the middle of fiscal year, they just wanna make sure that they have this flag before they run that um, first pay of the new, um, when they're starting as rehired. So the system knows what percentage and they're gonna show again with two lines, but the regular um, column before they rehired it's going to show with the percentage and then how many days they worked before retirement. So they're gonna have two days or two lines, excuse me. Okay. And I also put the link here um, for you to, takes you directly to um, our 
documentation that shows the rehire retiree. Oh, keeps going back and forth. Ah, doesn't like it for some reason. Okay, so why is an employee showing zero credit? Um, do they have all their attendance records? If they have attendance records that they enter throughout the year, make sure they have pay dates. The advanced reports are looking at that pay date to pull those days in or the percentage in um, days. So again, you want to make sure you go to your attendance records. First thing to look at. Sometimes a lot of times districts um, don't get pay stamp dates on there. It depends when they're getting pulled into their payroll um, and they're missing that date. So any attendance days that are within that fiscal year needs to make sure they enter a pay stamp date. And they can just do that by going to edit and adding a pay stamp date um, for that. Make sure it's inclusive of when they actually um, work those days the pay date is correct. Um, the only exception would be their doc. So if employees have doc days entered, um, that uses the activity date. So it's a little different. So just a reminder that if they do have doc days, it's using the activity date instead. So it doesn't need to have a pay date stamp. It needs the activity date to fall within that fiscal year. Okay. <clears throat> for the contract amount due, again, this is your obligation for the employee on the contract compensation minus the amount paid minus the amount docked. So I have an example here. This employee's obligation was 106,845 minus the amount paid that I found on the um, compensation. So again, that's coming directly from the compensation. So it's taking the contract obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount dot to get this contract amount due, which usually should be their accrued wages. Again, the second line here, the advanced employee amount, this should be zero. Again, this is not common for probably most of all districts. The second is the advanced pickup. How is this calculated? Again, it's using um, the obligation of the employee. It takes the pay per period for that employee and then it's doing a calculation behind the scenes of the remaining pays. So for this employee, it's pay per period is 4109.42. And for the 23rd, 24th, and 25th pay, it's taken times the 14%. So then what you do is take the 4109.42 times 25 pays. And that gives me 102, 735.50. So we should have one pay remaining of pay per period, which is right here. So you can see it's a little off than what the other um, three pays were. And then take that times the 14% and you get your 575.33. So it's a penny different. So if I add up all those together, I get exactly what my advanced pickup amount is. So pretty easy um, calculation there and a little bit of breakdown of exactly where those figures are coming from. Okay. The next line is the total amount advance line. So again, it's just adding up these two lines Again, you should not have anything there, so it'll be a zero, and then just takes the advance pickup amount and adds the total advance amount. And that was the amount that I figured here um, on the slide before. Okay. Again, um, each report has a rehire retiree column. 
Um, again, just like as before, you just want to make sure that they're entering and checking this box with the correct date. So again, the first thing to ask your districts, when did this employee actually um, rehire? Um, a lot of times they um, don't enter this date correctly, and they're just entering a date as of today or today, and they really um, rehired back in before the school year, before their first pay of the school year. Now, if that is the case that they forgot to mark these boxes, again, my documentation here, corrections needed if employee was not marked as a retire rehired, um, then they can follow these instructions to get them on one line for the um, reports. And again, under core adjustments, they will use these, they have these three that they will need to adjust to get those figures correctly. Let's see. Um, so right here under the 450, you have your fiscal to the date amounts withheld the fiscal date board amount that was earned as retire retiree and also your fiscal date gross that was earned. So in our documentation here, you have to do um, three adjustments, two to the 450, which is your fiscal date to date gross. And this is equaling actually what is on your 450 payroll item fiscal rate to date gross. So what I mean by that is that they can use, Go back to my payroll item. And if they were rehired the whole fiscal year, they just want to make sure that these figures here are down here. And that's exactly what they're doing here within the, um, the adjustments that you're going to be doing. So that way, um, when they run the report, they'll show as rehired. And then they'll have to do 15991 using the fiscal date amount um, withheld. And then that again will match your 591 fiscal year to date amount. So if we do the 591 and you rehired amount. So you wanna make sure that matches to this one. So you can just use these figures here to enter in um, the adjustments. And that should get them correct. Um, now, if you have an employee that's 691, then they're gonna have to make sure that they do um, the adjustment to the 691 also to get that amount updated. Okay. So again, we have those step-by-steps here for employees that should have been um, rehired uh, retire rehiree. Okay. Okay, so on to the bottom of the advanced position report. These would be here. These, where are these figures? Um, how are they calculating? Again, it's just equaling your contract amount due line of all the um, amount of all the employees calculated an amount due. So what is going to be for the summer months, this is the amount that it was calculated or the contract amount due. And then again, what is that calculation on the advanced pickup for these amount due? So everything that the employees um, um, advanced pickup amounts that were calculated for this coming um, advance. So it's just calculating the, con um, adding the contract amount due line, and then also the uh, total amount um, advance pickup. Okay. Um, again, out on our site here, we do have the STRS advanced position balancing report and advance amount report. These are .json reports that you can um, also use besides the Chexter's events um, that we have um, out there, which we already, I mean, you can use either. Um, both reports will work, plus 
the Chexter's advance report. It's kind of their, um, excuse me, right here, Chexter's advance report. So again, um, we just put a, def a couple of different um, report options out there for you um, to once they run that first pay that they can run after each pay to make sure that the advance is correct for each employee and they can keep track or check the employees to make sure that they're advancing um, the amounts correctly. Um, one of the reports I have out there, which I can't get because um, I don't have anything ran yet for the new new fiscal year, but I have those out here, the advance amounts. I just, that's the, this is the one there and there, and it just shows the employee number, the pay date, total stirs advance amount for that pay. So they can use this and just enter in what their pay date was for um, each pay coming into July and August, and they can pull that report. And it will show everybody that had advance amounts for that um, in the total. And the other one I have out there um, was the one for the STRS advanced positions report. It just has a lot more detail um, than the other ones. Um, if you want to use that, um, you can use this one also. And it just, like you see here, you have a lot more detail included in that report. So again, it's up to um, each district um, of how they want to balance, um, but we did give them a couple options. So they have those two reports, plus they also have the Chexter's report um, that they can run after each pay. And they will also use this in the end to pull all of the advance that they did for the whole um, summer months. So now on to the fiscal year to date report that's advancing. Um, for here, the criteria for an employee to appear on the fiscal year to date report, again, the employee must have a position retirement code um, set to stir. So for all three, it's the same. The employee must have earnings in the current fiscal year. So again, it's looking for any for advancing compensations, the accrued wages, again, will be added to the earnings. So again, what the um, report is doing is taking the contract obligation minus amount paid minus amount docked to get the accrued wages. Um, any adjustment journals that have been entered through the fiscal year um, with a type of total gross um, that are applying to any of the STRS payroll item um, and using the transaction date that falls within this fiscal year. And also if they have any applicable gross for historical payrolls um, paid to the employee in the payrolls and have a pay date within that fiscal year in order to get included on this fiscal to date report. So just um, a little extra here. So, and when an employee's must have a contract compensation. There's a few things that it's looking at. Again, the date range falls within that current year and the compensation pays paid is not equal to pays in the contract. Or maybe the employee has a compensation, has been paid in the fiscal year, or the employee was a non-contract compensation with the date range that they were paid in the fiscal year. So maybe they're on a non-contract compensation and they were STRS employees. So they're going to show on this fiscal year to date report. Okay. So here is an example of my fiscal year to date report. Okay. So again, um, making sure that they have um, the compensation date, it falls correctly within the act, academic date range, um, will prevent the compensation from advancing. Um, but again, you can have employees appearing on the fiscal year to date report then. So just remember to make sure the stop date is correct. 
uh, what do these figures mean? Um, so again, we're gonna be using the bottom of the report. Where are these report totals pulling from? So again, for the percentage, like I said before, um, it uses 100% uh, credit if that's 120 or, or more. If it's under 120, again, it's using your decision tree that we went through before. And then making sure if they're part-time that the flags are set correctly um, for, as part-time employees. So I won't go through that again because it's the same, the percentage will be the same as it was on the advance reports also. And just making sure that your re-employed retirees are set up correctly. The next thing is your SERS days column. Again, how is this counting? It's counting the days from the compensation job calendar of that employee. Adds any attendance days that might be added extra, making sure the pay date is stamped on there. Adds any absence days, making sure the pay date is stamped on there, and then making sure the activity date is in the fiscal year for docs. And then it adds or subtracts any core adjustments that were entered using the fiscal year dates that's equaling STRS retirement days with a transaction date within the fiscal year. Um, one thing we did notice um, from a district found that was when they're adding these retirement days in core, making sure a lot of them were just selecting the fiscal year to date box and that was not getting them on the reports or updating that. So what we found that what it's doing, it's using, um, the month to date box. So you wanna make sure when they're entering or updating days, if they need to, to get the STRS advanced days correct, they wanna make sure that they check the month to date and not just the fiscal. Um, a lot of them were uh, excluding these uh, three and they were not getting on the report. Um, we do have this in with the developers to see um, if this can be added the fiscal year to date, since it is, you know, STRS is a fiscal year to date thing. Um, that this box, if they check this box instead, and that it will update the days, but they have to do some research and make sure what that box is all involving in other reports. So, so as of right now, just let your districts know if they're using the STRS um, retirement days to update um, any days to make sure they're also using the month to date box. And I do have that here in a in the PowerPoint, so that way you remember. Okay. The next line is your non-tax deposit pickup. Um, again, this is the amount that is withheld, and this is on your on the five ninety one and six ninety one for each payroll. And any adjustments? Find um, they find any adjustments again that were made to the five ninety one six ninety one. Um, using the type of amount withheld or the amount, board amount of payroll item. So again, that would be uh, here under your adjustments if they um, made adjustments to those, fig to those two. And then you also have your non-tax advanced amount. Again, that was the calculation I had earlier where they break down those four last pays to get that total um, on the non-tax advance amount column. For the non-tax total, it's taking what was paid through this, um, the school year and then what will be um, advancing through the summer months to get your non-tax total. So it's just these two columns being added together. And again, your last column, again, is just your rehire, rehire date, just like the other two reports. So just making sure that those flags are set correctly at the right time and the dates are entered correctly. I do, um, I like to use when I'm balancing those report under um, custom grid curator, 
I like to go to the pay historical, um, excuse me, payroll item history. Oh, where's that? I'm past. Here it is. So if I need to figure out in employees what they were paid through the school year and what's going to be calculated on this upcoming, um, on these advanced reports, I like to use this historical payroll item. And I just um, put in my 591 to create a report. And you can add um, other things here like pay dates and such stuff like that in here to include only pay dates that are in this fiscal year. And then I created it as a CESV or Excel. So here's an example of the report that I created. And what this shows is all the pays for the employee for this uh, fiscal year and um, for the, in the applicable gross and the amount. And I use this figure and I use this so I can balance to that fiscal year to date report for an employee. So for the one employee that I have on here, Adams Christopher, I kind of did a breakdown on here of where and how I'm calculating these figures. So you can see if um, if a uh, district says their employee don't think they're um, it's correct, they can you can pull this report for them and they can do a calculation on here. And what I do is just a total the columns of each. So again, the SRS advanced gross, we don't want that amount to be within this new fiscal year. So I have to subtract those off. So all pays for the Apple gross for all the pays for this fiscal year, I have to minus that advance a gross amount off to get my, um, my correct figure which is the figure for this year, for fiscal year. So again, like this employee, Christopher Adams, has two jobs that is calculated in these earnings. So he has job one and job seven. So I calculated the amount of what is to be remaining to be paid for those four pays. So I just took their paper period times the amount of how many pays are left to get my um, earnings for the upcoming months and then equals and then I added those together and I get my 80,237.29 which is exactly what I'm showing here. So the non-tax deposit pickup column this is what is paid during the um, during the year so that is your column here if you add that column here you're going to get your your stirs paid during the fiscal year. And that's exactly what is showing here. Then in my non-tax advance amount, I pulled that is the calculation that we're doing here. So when you're calculating your four remaining pays, it's calculating those amounts here to get that total. So you can see the advance pickup amount for job one and then my job seven. And if you add those together, those two figures, you get your 162382. So then the next non-tax total column is just your total of these two. I know it seems simple, huh? But once you get used to using um, like this, the payroll item history, um, I find it easier so I can see all the figures that are out there. And it actually lists all your advanced gross that um, from last fiscal year and your stores advance amounts that went out. So it's just kind of, I can see it all on my spreadsheet here. And then I can do my calculation right here in the spreadsheet to check out if there is anything. That report, again, is from your custom grid creator. under historical payroll item. Um, I, I think as of right now, the districts can't use that right now, but um, but you at the ITC can get that pulled for them, or if you have to do calculations, um, you can use that. Again, you can also use it for the 450 
And I do have a report here pulled just for the 450 if you have, if they want to see the 450 amounts also. So here is just a 450 breakdown. So um, definitely utilize that custom grid curator. Um, I think it's very helpful when you're trying to see exactly what was supposed to be last year's um, advance amounts. And you can just do the calculations to find out exactly what it should be, if it's correct or not. Okay, so hopefully that's a little helpful and to use. Okay, so again, at the bottom of that report, the figures are for the non-tax earnings, you have your fiscal year-to-date gross amounts from your 450 payroll items plus the accrued wages. And then the non-tax advance amount, that is the retirement amount that will be withheld on the summer pays um, to the per pay compensation basis. So again, it's just um, adding the report totals from these columns. These two um, tax earnings, this is not common because most STRS, um, excuse me, contributions are annuitized. So we don't need to worry about those two columns. They should be zero. Again, for the tax and non-tax column, again, this is the amount that was paid during the fiscal year plus the advance amount. So that is your total for the end of the fiscal year. The amount advanced is just the amount that's going to be advancing for these fiscal, um, for these last four pays. That is what this column here for the 1400 amount advances. And then the regular pickup, that's going to be your tax plus your non-tax minus your retiree pickup, which is right here, the 57. So it takes the tax and non-tax column of the 5,429 minus your retiree pickup to get your regular pickup. For the next um, report total, this non-tax deposit pickup, again, these are going to be your payments to STRS during the, um, on the, from the 591 and 691, which is only during the fiscal year. And then your non-tax total is going to be all your non-tax deposit pickups plus your total advance amount. So that non-tax total is going to match your tax and non-tax column over here. Okay. Again, for the total deposit pickup, this is going to be zero for both um, total tax total in the tax deposit pickup. And then the last report totals, these are going to be just your retire, higher retiree employees. So again, this is your retiree amount advance. All these four columns is specific to those employees who are marked as retired rehiree checkbox with the um, rehire date. So again, when you're on that report, if you want to um, do, if you can, I think you can pull this in Excel spreadsheet, you can pull all those employees are just um, rehired and then that those employees should match what is showing down here. Okay. So the common questions that we have here, um, rehired retirees, which we have gone over a few times, but again, just make sure the rehired um, are both rehired retiree and the dates are populated correctly. Um, if the employee is appearing twice on the report, um, again, either they didn't have the date entered correctly from the very beginning of the fiscal year, and they just entered, uh, a lot of times districts forget to enter that, so they just enter a date um, when they remember it that as of that date. Um, but again, they need to go back 
to that um, start date of when they actually started working as a rehire. Um, again, they can have two lines, like I mentioned earlier, if they started in the middle of the fiscal year or uh, middle of the calendar year or fiscal year. Um, again, they will show with two date, with two columns, but both columns should have days on um, showing as with um, STIRS days on it, but only the percentage will be showing for employee before they were rehired. After rehired, then they're going to have a 0% percentage for that column. So like I said before, they're going to have two columns for this or two lines for this employee, both with days, but only one. Um, but the regular um, before rehire is going to have a percentage credit. And again, if they need to make, make corrections, again, please utilize our documentation that shows the breakdown of exactly what they need to do and what amounts that that needs to um, match. Um, again, if maybe employee had um, earnings from fiscal year 23 um, that were paid in fiscal year 24 during the summer months and they shouldn't have been, um, then they can go ahead and remove those by using um, our core adjustments. And they can use that to make sure that the total gross is removed, the amount withheld on the 591 or the 691. So that will get your um, retirement if they're not supposed to be on fiscal year 24. Um, and they didn't get corrected at the um, end of um, before they moved on. Um, again, they can use our documentation, removing last fiscal year earnings and contributions from SERS advance. So again, like I said, these are employees that maybe were paid in July for June days worked of last year, but they're showing on the SERS advance this year. So then they can go ahead and remove those um, and making sure um, that they're not showing on the report. Okay, so we have the breakdown here of what um, they're supposed to um, check. Um, one thing to remember now is to make sure before um, they start running the advance or maybe the last pay coming up or in June, making sure if they have any docs, they wanna make sure they start entering those in um, so that way it gets calculated when they're running their STIRS advance reports. So if they know of any docs that are coming up for the summer months, make sure they get those um, entered now. If they forget to enter those now and they dock them during the summer months and they're in advance, they just need to keep a tally of that so they know that their uh, advance paid amount is not going to be um, exactly the same as what they um, did when they went into advance. Um, they can enter in the, into future now, and then they can take take that out after they um, run their advance and get their submission report done, and they can go back in and remove them, or they can leave them in if they know they're going to dock them in that first pay in July. Again, it's up to them, or they can use an effective date if they know which pay in July or August they're going to use that dock. Okay. Again, like I said, if they're not known ahead of time, um, make sure they report the difference to STIRS. They're gonna have to go into the STIRS advanced configuration, advanced mode, there you at the ITC, excuse me, and uncheck the checkbox because it won't take them out in advance if um, these doc days weren't entered prior to running STIRS advance. And then again, if the compensation for that employee is still in advance. Again, they're gonna you're gonna want to use the STIRS advanced definition um, to take them out of advance. And again, um, on the compensation, a mass change procedure you can use to take those employees out. If I still have it here. Yep, right here. And again. Um, you can find that in our mass change procedures that we have out here for um, SSDT. And you can, um, and that's right, where is it? 
There it is. So you can use that um, and you can get the, your making sure that um, all employees are out of advance at the end of the fiscal year or after the last pay in August. And I already have that here. So then um, if you have your columns for STRS advance, right there. So. so you just wanna make sure you can do by equal by true. And if you have uh, your districts have any employees that are still showing as true, then you can use that mass change procedure after they double check why they're still showing as true and make the corrections. They need to do that first because we don't want the districts going in there and changing anything or removing, um, which they shouldn't be able to only you at the ITC because I think a lot of you only use mass change at the ITC level and not at district. So again, um, they have we have that mass change stirs advance to change all those employees that are still showing. Okay. Um, one other thing to remember, position numbers. Um, we highly recommend, tell your districts, do not, if they know that they're maybe changing jobs and they're moving from um, one, um, they're changing positions and they wanna move one position from one to four and four to one, um, and they have that, don't have them um, wait until they're out of advance, especially if the employee is in advance. If they're not in advance, that's fine. But if the employee is in advance, um, it does mess with their calculations um, for every time they run the payroll then. So try to um, let your districts know, do not change any um, position numbers for employees that are in advance. Just, just have them wait and they can do the update afterwards and then they can move those figures using core adjustments um, and move those um, figures over to the new position if they want to or the um, payroll items. So just a reminder, just don't have them change anything. It'd be less headache for them and you at ITC. Um, pay types. Um, again, using pay types of doc, retro, termination, and payoff, accrued wages, um, these are allowed, but again, it will cause balancing, uh, advanced balancing issues. So if these are, are used during um, advance and your employees in advance, it's going to throw off your advance um, amount. So just a reminder. So, and under organization, um, the amount paid back is going to mess with this amount because we want these two figures to match at the end of that fourth pay or fifth pay. Early contract payoffs. Um, if you have any early contract payoffs that you know of, go ahead and get those ready now um, for that last so they maybe are going to be paid one pay in July and then they're done. Um, make sure that they go ahead and start um, getting their pace paid and their um, number of pays updated now. So that way when they run that advance, they are all correct and they're not getting paid um, or getting shorted because your advance is going to be calculated on that full four pays of that employee. But if you know they're going to be paid before um, like one or two pays into July and then they're done, they're not going to have the two other pays that are going to be in advance. Um, go ahead and change that number of pays to um, 20 or 24 out of 26 or something. So that way or 24 pays so that way they are going to be correct. So what happens next after um, you're running the pays? Um, the district should be running check stirs advance after every pay um, to make sure that their stirs advance because they can check, oh, excuse me, ah, hit the wrong one, check stirs advance. They can run this and just put in the pay, pay date of when their pay is or their ending period dates. And they can run this after every pay to make sure that total amount that they have on the STRS pays, and then also making sure that their or, um, amount paid is always adding 
um, being added on. Because those four pays are going to equal to this advance amount. Keep your fingers crossed that it does. So always have them double check um, that this amount paid back is always increasing. And it should be um, the amount that that report shows every pay. Um, so again, after all the summer pays are processed, um, there's two different ways that this these will be on flagged and it may not be. So if the amount paid back is equal or greater than this advance amount field, then the district will no longer be in advance and this advance mode flag will be on chat on check automatically. The system will do that. When the advance mode flag is on checked, then again, your amount paid back is going to go to zero. So you will no longer see an amount in here. So that means that your SRS submission file and the amounts are on the report matched. But if the amount paid back is less then the amount advanced, then they're not going to come out of advance. It's going to be um, che remain checked, and then they're going to have the uh, amount paid back veil will remain in there. So from there, they'll have to do some calculations. And like I said, running the STRS advance reports, and they can run in that then for the four pays. And they want to double check that that amount, and they might have to check each employee against the STRS advance um, a reports that they had calculated and making sure that those amounts match what was withheld for those four months match what they're saying here. So they might have to do some research in there um, to figure out what employee. But if you remind your districts to keep track if they're um, making any different, um, like I said, docs or anything through those four pays, um, just have them keep notes that this is why they're going to be off on the advance paid um, column. Um, it might save them some headache in the end if they just kind of keep a running total of um, maybe different employees that they're entering um, that they know that is not going to be correct. Okay. Um, one other thing to remember, um, districts have a chance to get that figure still out there. But once we start the new um, after December, so January 1st of the new coming year, that amount paid goes back to zero and they no longer can get that amount that is different. So just a reminder to your districts to make sure that they're figuring it out now and they don't wait till later next spring. And then they're trying to figure out why the amount paid back is um, wrong. Um, after that, they won't have that amount there anymore. It gets cleared and they never can go back to that. It's it's cleared out. Um, Again, you probably can do a backup, it just depends how far uh, backups you can go to get that amount um, so they can do that figuring of what is wrong. Um, again, um, compare, like I said earlier, um, the advanced pickup report, payment report, and then your check stirs. Again, run that report. And these figures for those four pays should balance to this advanced pickup. If it doesn't, um, then they have to figure out why that one pay is different. Again, it's probably because um, early payoff or um, the or a missing amount. Like I said earlier, if they're missing one pay, then that's probably a early payoff. And then they have to make updates with STRS to get that corrected. Okay. Again, if the district doesn't balance, again, use our um, updates to remove those figures um, that um, shouldn't have been on there. So you, again, you can use the core adjustments for that employee for the 450 for the total gross to remove the amounts. The 591 is your amount withheld or the 691 board's amount of payroll item.
Um, if your district needs to be taken out of advance, if they ran advance and then they notice that um, and created submission file and everything and they're in advance now and they notice that it's wrong and they figured it out before they ran the first pay of July, you can still take them out of advance and do the corrections and then redo STRS advance. So again, we have our documentation out here. Um, this is just for um, ITC to take them out of advance. Go. And then under STRS advanced configuration. There we go. There we go. So again, this would be for you at the ITC to take them out of advance. So if the districts, again, before they ran their first pay in July, it's not too late then, um, they can go ahead and you can take them out of advance. So what you would want to do is go to their configuration under SERS advance and unmark this because we'll pretend that that's checked. So we're going to uncheck that, but then you have to do one more step and you have to go to the employees' compensations, find everybody equals true, and run that mass change procedure that I showed earlier. That would take everybody out of advance. So again, just use extreme caution on this and always make sure that they didn't finish their first pay in July because that pay in July would be wrong then for anybody that's in advance. If they didn't cash it in time, then they're going to have to do the corrections with STRS advance or with STRS, excuse me. Okay. Reminders for fiscal year. Um, just a reminder, um, anybody that's new at ITC, the system configuration stirs advance, um, this should be checked. This should not be unchecked. Only time it should be unchecked for districts is if they don't send a file to stirs. Otherwise, this should be checked because if this gets unchecked, they can process the July payroll without getting the stirs advance done. And then, then they're gonna be in heap of trouble. So this has been added. This was added last year, but just to just put it on here again for this fiscal year, um, just making sure that is checked. We do want we don't want that on check. So only your districts that don't run STRS advance can on check that. Then they can move on with their first pay in July. So until the STRS advance is submitted and done, they are not able to move on to their first pay in July it stops them. They will get a warning and or error and they can't move on. So they have to get their advance done first before they move on to the first pay in July. Okay, so that's a crucial thing. Okay. Um, if needing to add SERS days retirement, I just wanted to remind you, again, I said that early, um, making sure that the month date is checked. Um, just checking the fiscal year to date, which you think would be correct, um, does not get your days correct on the on the reports. So making sure that they um, check the month to date also. Um, a new thing for this is now you at the ITC as admin level can modify the advance amount. So if a district contacts you and they made the corrections and you know that they made the corrections, oh, what I do here, get it. Um, you can go ahead and correct that. And I don't have this. This is a demo account and I don't have that yet here. But um, if you if in your district, that is there now. Um, this was just recently added. So you at the admin level can go ahead and update that. So if they know that that amount was wrong, um, you can go ahead and correct that to the advance amount that is correct. And then that way, when they're paying back each paid back, those four pays, it will equal and it will come out of advance. But again, they want to make sure that all the advance or all the amounts that, you know, your district stated um, 
that the values are correct. So, um, but again, you do have that option to um, use that, update that advance mount now if needed. Um, again, I included a um, URL here for the URL, excuse me, for the workshop training and webinars for STIRS if, um, if your districts have any, um, maybe going to re-retire or any training, they have, we have the link here for any calendar um, items that are coming up. Um, one other thing I want to do is the SIRS. Um, this was just released this morning, so I just wanted to bring this to your attention that the SIRS charge for SIRS has changed for fiscal year 24, which we didn't, we just um, updated this. So that is now at 30000 And I did update the documentation for the calculations on that. Um, so just a reminder to your districts that that, that did change. It's no longer 25,000 for the year, it's 30,000 now. And I did update the documentation. So um, if they have questions on the search chart, we have that calculated here on exactly how to figure that amount on that search charge when they get that report from SERS. Okay, any questions on um, any of the reports that I've gone through or anything like that? Can I ask a question about inflated wages? Sure. Um, sure. What on um, which one? <laughs> on the fiscal year to date. On fiscal year to date report. Oh. The, yeah, the last one. Yeah, we want if the person is. Like they they have like they should right like if they're getting like full pickup on pickup like they the inflated wages should show here. Yes. I know you have to check that box, but what I'm saying is if somebody didn't check that box, we should be going to the district and being like, hey, correct. We're gonna have to do some adjustments here. Yes, if they didn't okay. check that box of the inflated wages, which he is talking about on the payroll item, four fifty. Because a lot of times they have the amount or the percentages set up correctly, but they forget to do that percentage or that increased compensation right here. And that increased compensation is adjusting the figures, like he said, on the earnings right here. So you're going to have to go in and do an adjustment to get their earnings correct for the report. So you would just do a total gross and an applicable gross yeah. to the four to the four fifty for the amount of the of the pickup amount basically the 14 percent correct to get that to get that amount correct okay that's i think that that's what i think i had to do that a lot last year but i'm yeah. literally looking as you're talking about this i'm doing it in a district on my other screen you know like so that i'm following right. with you and i just found somebody who has this with them so yeah, yeah. because usually they have the percentages correct and then you probably will get a warning on here that, uh, as I say, I don't know, maybe you won't get a warning that your um, earnings are off, but I may, they probably won't, not on the SERS advantage. No, yeah, there's no warning on here. It just I doesn't balance at the bottom, yeah. you know, per your yep. directions. Yeah. Yep. So that, that would be a good catch. So that would be another maybe reminder in your fiscal year of meetings um, to make sure they have that increased compensation if they're supposed to have that checked on that. And that's like retire, rehire. It, it fixes it moving forward. So you can check right. it. And so like they should check it now, but then it's not going to do anything until right. it's not going to go backwards. No, it's not going to do the calculation for them. So they have to figure out that difference of what should have been increased compensation for that figure for these um, figures to get that percentage correct. Yes, they do. Or, or, excuse or, me, or, or we do. They do or we do have to. Yes, do I would say probably <laughs> more or less. <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions on that? Okay. Um, I have a question here. It says, it appears the SRS days on the fiscal year report are showing the days as a day, as a day they run the report rather than as 630. That new because what if the district is done with their last pay before 630 
and processors advance the days and then this report would typically not be correct at 630 if it's pulling as of the date they run the report. Yeah. It appears that the SR days are showing the days. I don't, is my microphone working? Yes. This is the first time I'm, I'm chiming in, not in the chat. Um, we had a district that checked their STRS fiscal year to date report, and it looks like it's pulling days as of today, like when you run the report every day, rather than as of 630 on the fiscal year to date report. I mean, their service credit is still showing right, but does that, I mean, I don't remember it being like that in the past, but that might also just be a bad memory. Gosh, what happened here? <laughs> just lost my screen. Um, no, it should not be. It should be when you're running that report, it's pulling as of June. And I know the non-advanced report does, that looks correct, but I just was testing it for another district. And then when I went in and looked at the um, job calendar as of today versus as of June 30th, like they have administrators who do have work days through June 30th. So they're getting advanced but the fiscal year to date report is not showing all of their work days. It's only showing as of today. So it's like eight days short or whatever it is, however many days are left in the month of June. Okay. Can you point. create a ticket for that district? Yep, I will. And then we'll take a look at it and see what's going on because that seems odd. Yeah. Yes. And I don't, I, I truly haven't yeah. tested it in other districts. Dirts. This just came in yesterday afternoon. So I can see if it's just in them also. Okay, because then it makes me wonder if they don't have the right start and stop dates of the compensations and stuff. That's kind of what I was, I wanted to see what exactly, um, what dates they have entered. Yep, I can do that. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Can I, can I follow up on that? Like, so what you're saying is if I go to a calendar, like if I know what calendar that employee is on and I do the custom date range for 7 23 through 6 30 of 24, mm -hmm. whatever that number is, that's what should be on the STRS advance report, not the number that says contract days worked on their compensation. This one here, days worked as of 6.30, correct. So your non-advanced employees is this is as of from 7.1 to 6.30. That's okay, going to be but, So that one shows that, but what about the other one that we were just on? What, the, what about the days on that report, this one? What is that, that STRS days? Where does that come from? Okay. That comes from your compensation job calendar, your attendance days, and your absence days, and any days that were from the month to date, um, transaction date. So that should be your total. Let me see now. now I'm getting myself confused. Let's see. You would think all the reports would be the same, but obviously not. Oh. Okay, so I was just trying to find an employee here, not advance. Let's go. Alexander. So this should be your total stirs. So this would be all your days for your your count your um your work days for the year plus any days um that they added from adjustments so this should be your total does that make i feel like they're different i mean i'm i'm in I, like i said i have two screens on my other screen i've been trying to follow along with you and kind of you know like Right. It helps me it helps me remember more if I'm watching you and clicking on the side doing exactly what you're doing. Uh, I have an employee who's on a 230 day calendar and I use their compensation start and stop date. That way I knew I was right grabbing the right thing and that says 230, but this says two that report we're looking at right now would say 220 which matches what's on their compensation screen. So like I feel like they're pulling from two different places. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's Emily. 
oh, are you asking me that question? I yeah, Emma, sorry. Yeah, yes, it, yes. Um, it, it, okay. yeah, it's not even pulling from the compens because the compensation screen contract days worked pulls from the pay period end date of the last payroll. So sometimes it's actually showing three different numbers because that's only updated as of the last pay. The fiscal year to date report is showing work days as of today, the day I run the report. And then there's obviously the days worked as of June 30th. Yeah, go here instead. Sorry. So it's why I how I understand it's coming from the job calendar. The attendant says. So it's counting their full days. Let me, let me, I'll have to look exactly because now I'm getting the two reports confused on exactly how that is. Must can be I chime, can I chime in? Yes, that? please, Lori, because I'm like. Uh, so I think when it comes to those that are like not your teachers, those that have like 260 days, 230 days in their calendar, those days are actually crossing fiscal years so their compensation could say 230 but from 7 1 to 6 30 which is all that strs cares about those days are going to differ because that range is different than how their contract is set up and being paid does that help at all um, but for like your teachers and those that are like within you know, they're working all their days within the same fiscal year. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, they're advancing and being paid over the summer months, but they've worked all those by, by June 30th. So those on the reports should, you know, 7-1 to 630, those days are all going to fall within that range. But when you have principals and, you know, their their contracts might run into July, which is the next fiscal year. Thanks, so, Lori. I uh, I do yeah. have this specific district does have seven one to six thirty employees, and I just checked their job calendar for those specific administrators. And when I plug in the specific dates of seven one through June thirtieth, it does equal two hundred and sixty days. So they truly do have two hundred and sixty days in one fiscal year that does not cross over because they are seven one employees. But then when I run the fiscal year to date report, it's only showing 242 days worked, which would be as of today I, or yesterday or whenever she ran the report. So that's why it's confusing yeah. on this one specifically. Yeah, that's why I don't. Yeah, send us that ticket. Yeah. Um, that definitely, you know, if they're all within the same fiscal year, then that doesn't correlate to what I just, the example that I just used. Yep, um, that, I'll, I'll send that in. I'll send you now, screenshots. Sometimes you have to look back at last fiscal year where they reported correctly then. Because I'm wondering if the dates are wrong. Correctly yeah. then, then it rolls into the next fiscal year and it just keeps going in that direction. But we'll take a look. Take Send us the ticket and we'll take a look at your specific example. But hopefully, you know, it might help better understand, you know, administrators and stuff, that's common that, you know, they have work days after July, or I'm sorry, June 30th. So those days after that date are going to fall into the next fiscal year. So they could be different um, on the two different, on the different reports. Will do. Thank you. Sure. Um, Andrew, I was just going back to that one where you said you want to discuss what happens to an employee when they go for advance or non advance. Are you just saying when should they add that new position or? I just wanted to make sure, you know, I mean, I, I've I've typically encouraged people to double pay the person, like let the teacher advance run through and then just start the other contract. I wanted to make sure that that's what everybody else was doing. Well, I think or that's. If 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Just, just I or if STRS has a, I, you know, my the more I spend time with STRS and SCRS, the more I learn that they're very particular about certain things, and so I wanted to make sure I was doing that correctly. Well, I know earlier, and um, I had mentioned that if you're changing an employee's position and they're in advance, um, don't like like we said, change position number. So I'm thinking probably paying them on two positions, letting that non-advance contract don't mess with it until they're out of advance. So probably creating a whole new principal job is probably the best to do that. And then if they want to change that teacher job from job one to four and principal to job one, then they can do it after the advance is done. So they're not messing with advance. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to I just wanted to double check that that's okay. what people people do do i mean that that i think that's with the whole thing with uh changing positions um just add a whole new position and paying them on that and then they can change it um if they want to change that position number to be their job one as principal then but wait till after advance is done so because messing just not messing with any advanced jobs until they're completely out of advance is probably the best thing to do. Andrea. Yes. This is Vicki from the Omen. Hi, Vicki. Um, hi. In, uh, in response to the changing of positions. Yes. We were told a couple of years ago by SSDT that that is highly not recommended because right. it messes with history. So is oh, that- not do it at all? Yeah, not to change position numbers at all. It probably, they're probably right. It's if they, if they want to change, um, I think the history is going to stay it. Yes. The history is going to stay as is. So however they have that job position at that history up till they change it, it's going to stay with that job number. Then after they change that position number from like one to four to four to one, um, you know, one position one, then from then on, position one's going to have that history of that position number. Right. Um, so you, you, yeah. you could technically have yeah. um, multiple histories multiple. associated with position one. Right. The history stays as history. There's no changing of the history. Okay. Because we have a district that likes to do that and we've tried to tell them not to. Strongly recommend to them yeah. not to do that. Yeah. So. I just want to make sure that that was still the case. Yeah. And as that... far as I know, history stays as history, as you're correct. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Okay. I know we kind of went through all a lot today. Is there anything else that you have questions on or want to know if we have documentation for? Um, I hope it was a little helpful knowing where each um, totals and what each column is coming from. So, okay, I guess then that's all we have for today. Um, again, if, please send us any tickets or questions if you need a district looked at, we will um, go ahead and take a look at that. So, okay, uh, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and hopefully it was helpful. Have a good day. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you.